All right, you guys, let's dig in to number two of the theories and potential suspects of the community um, that you guys showed interest in. Now, I know I just talked about this on my last story, and I'm going to talk about it again because it's the second one here. So I just put this poll out uh, last week asking about. Um, what topics you guys would like to hear. And number two on that list is the Jacks. This time we're talking about Jack Showalter. All right. Jack Showalter in the Idaho four case, uh, looking at some of the connections that are there that have to do with the Idaho four case. And uh, it will be a, an open conversation talking through some of the details. Now, why do you think Jack Showalter got brought up in this way? Um, I think he was brought up because um, of the grub truck video. Obviously, he uh, it's odd. Like he walks with them there. Um, then they like ignore him the whole time and then they ditch him. And he. A lot of people felt like he was like stalking them. It doesn't necessarily seem like he's stalking them, um, but it definitely intrigued people because, you know, right after that, they go home and are, you know, never seen again. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people it's an try odd situation. talk about the grub truck footage and I guess forget the, you know, what did you tell Adam? That is one of the most important parts, yeah. and it's not even in the grub truck footage. No, it's not in the grub truck footage, but that that's a very important part because that proves there there's no stalking going on there. No, he was literally talking to them. Yeah, they knew each other. There, yeah. There's no weird stalking going on. So why they ditched him, that's a little bit strange. I, I don't know why. I don't know what was going on there. I don't know if they were just drunk i don't know if they were like let's just leave without saying anything ha 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 drunk giggle you know what i mean we don't know we don't know but i think that it's highly subjective to automatically go bad faith in any situation i don't think that's a fair assumption and assessment of any situation no, he just might have thought they were cute and wanted to hang out with them. He might. I mean, it, it sounds like there was personal connection there. But yeah, um, you know, it, it, there's been some connections that I found. So Maddie's boyfriend is uh, or was um, Jake. Don't remember his last name. It's Jake something. Um, and they, the fraternity or Greek life call him, you know, Rogaine Jack or Rogaine Jake or whatever, because he was losing his hair, like on the top part of his head. Um, and Jack Showalter and Maddie, Madison Mogan's boyfriend, Jake went to high school together and were in the same class. And then both went to this college or were in the area uh, for the same year in college. So a lot of people believe that, uh, you know, Showalter was like, Hey, I'm looking out for my best friend's girlfriend. Is there any evidence they were actually best friends? No, but bros girlfriend. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I don't think guys I think like possible. are like, yeah, we're BFFs, you know? But I mean, that would make sense though, because they were pretty drunk. Um, they were pretty drunk walking, like real drunk. Yeah, walking the Super street. Drunk. <laughs> very, very drunk. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, side note here, just because we just brought that up, but, uh, you know, what's interesting is you remember in the Steve Gonsalves text messages, how it says all their, uh, toxicology reports are clear. Yeah. Yeah. They were really drunk. All of them were out partying that night. So how were they clear? Yeah, they couldn't have been. They could not have been. It's not possible. So the real question is, who has the bad information? Was the Gonzalez's told the wrong information if those texts are real? 
or the text fake. <laughs> or the text fake. Yeah. I don't know. If the if the Gonzalez's really think that the toxicology was clear, and maybe they mean clear as in no narcotics. Maybe that's all they cared about. Is like, okay, yeah, there's weed and alcohol, but that's like a normal day. Maybe. Don't know. But uh all right, so we look into Jack Show Walter. And so now let's go to objective evidence of why I, I think a lot of people drew this connection is statistically the last person to see somebody alive is statistically the one who's involved m the majority of the time. The majority. It is step one in a police investigation of any kind. Doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if a life was lost. It doesn't matter if there was some kind of robbery. They start with the last person backwards. Well, Jack Showalter was it. I mean, the last person to see them alive is the murderer always. Yeah. Yeah. You mean the last known person? Yeah. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. So. Um, I had to troll you for a minute. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, yeah, I think that's the obvious connection that a lot of people make. And I think that it's fair that a lot of people made that connection. Yeah. I think that is, I think it's important to ask those questions. Like, yeah, it is. he needed to be cleared. He absolutely did. He needed to be cleared. And a lot of people think when the Gonzalez's came out and said, Hey, people were cleared way too quick that they were literally talking about Jack show Walter. Now that's a subjective connection that the community made that I have no evidence of you guys. So, well, people um, also thought the roommates too. Yeah. But it, it's interesting. It's interesting because, you know, again, looking objectively at police investigations, the person, the go-to person here would be Jack show Walter or the roommates, right? We don't know if the roommates actually saw them get home, if they had an interaction or anything like that, or if Jack Showalter was the last one. Um, now, by all accounts, from what we hear, and we don't have evidence of this, this is just rumor from uh, victims' families in the community, is that Jack Showalter willingly came forward and submitted his DNA and a lie detector test. Jack Showalter. Yep. Came forward and submitted a lie detector test and DNA. I thought they said that about Jack DeCore. Uh, if they're doing lie detector tests, they are not going to only do it on one person. If they had that lie detector out, they probably did it to 100 people, literally. Um, now, when people started digging into Jack Showalter's background, um, people found out that he was a hunter, that he, in his hunting pictures with big game kills, um, he had a knife that looked like it could have matched what the police were looking for. Mm hmm. Interesting, right? People drew some conclusions with that. Uh, it, he came from a very rich or wealthy family that people felt like there could be a way to cover things up, to smooth things over, to be able to make important calls and say, Hey, I need you to look this way and not that way, you know? So interesting. Um, but, uh, when you watch the food truck footage, what do you get from it? Oh, it's hard. Um, I've watched it. I've watched it through a lot of other creators who have pointed out certain things. Um, I see, honestly, I just see two drunk girls waiting for food. One thing that really stuck out to me is Kaylee was on her phone the whole time and they were talking about something. They were talking about something. Yeah. She was on her phone the whole time. That is what stuck out to me. Um, all the other people around them didn't. I mean, they all seem like they're having a good time and just chit chatting, except for 
there there is something that stuck out to me after somebody pointed it out, and that is sorority sisters that you know they're they're literally sorority sisters acting like they don't know Kaylee or Maddie, not saying hi, not acknowledging them, which that sticks out to me after somebody pointed that out. It is strange. Yeah. I don't know what it means, but we did we have heard, okay, that literally not a single one of these victims were in good standing with their fraternities. Ethan was supposedly on, you know, like um probation basically because of academics. Um, and Zan, wait, was it Zana that left? Like, I think Kaylee, Zana, and Maddie had all left. Yeah. Is the assumption because, um, their frater- their sororities are not listed on the U of I website. Right. Yeah. And Which Kaylee, went, Kaylee was leaving. Strange coincidence, you know, um, and uh, I see connections there, um, but uh, yeah, when I when I look at the food truck footage, for the most part, you guys, I see normal behaviors. When you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I know True. that is such an obvious statement that everyone has heard. Everyone who's watching this has heard. It's a really good point. But you have to remind yourself of that all the time. Because our feelings want there to be something there for us to give us reason why this horrible, once-in-a-lifetime horrible situation happened, right? When I'm watching it, I don't see anything obvious that stands out there. I've, I've given my concern with the Linda Lane footage, too, where, uh, you know... I, I, Nothing can be used in court there, so I have a very hard time wanting to put my time into Linda Lane um, because any sounds can't be verified. We don't. I've never seen the original footage. We verify it through the metadata. um, It it, and the food truck, the grub truck was such a big deal. I feel very similar to that. That. There's so many different people and personalities in front of that video camera that I don't know any of them personally. I don't know if any of them have weird little ticks that somebody might be like, oh, you see them doing that right there? That sign means something. Or they could just have a weird little tick about them. You know what I mean? That that doesn't make sense to anyone that doesn't know them. So I have a very hard time with that. It's very interesting, the conversation uh, that they were having, though. It's interesting that they were having an engaging conversation while walking from Corner Club uh, to the food truck. And then it's interesting that they were, they separated from him, started having their own conversation, and then literally ditched him. Yeah, like, it is full weird. blown ditch. It is weird because they have that whole conversation with him about Adam or whatever. And then they get there and they act like they literally don't know him. And Kaylee's on her phone the whole time. And, you know, they're just talking to each other, Kaylee and Maddie. And Maddie is clearly wasted. Um, Like, I think even more than Kaylee is. Um, Yeah. I don't see Kaylee actually being that wasted in that video. I see Maddie super wasted. I don't, I think Kaylee's tipsy. But I honestly don't think she's wasted. Um, that's what sticks out to me the most. And then them ditching him. Yeah. It makes me wonder what was going on. I I agree. It makes me wonder what changed from that conversation to the food truck. Did uh, Was his response, did it throw them off? Did it scare them? Yeah. Like, did they, were they talking about that? And then he said something back and it threw them off and they're like, whoa, can we trust him? Yeah. Yeah. Did that conversation go further? Yep. Then we got to see, I mean, off camera where he's like, hey, that's serious. I, I don't know what's going on, but you shouldn't have said something you know what i mean i'm I'm making this up okay i i don't know but we don't even know what the conversation was about like we don't know what she told matt adam no idea no idea so it's understandable to me why jack showalter has so many questions around him right yeah now 
One of the details or connections is that Jack Showalter lives in the apartments nearby. And and for anyone watching, a lot of times when we're talking about somebody, um, I don't like to use their last name. And the people that are watching that care enough to know will know the person's last name. But Jack Showalter's name is as known as the victims, literally. It is. As known as the victims. If you go on Google and type in his name, d- endless amount of links and pictures and everything else pop up. So uh, I just want to clarify why I'm openly talking about the name in this way, you know. Um, and uh, so one of the ta- one of the connections we have here is that Jack Showalter lives in the apartments right by and is a direct neighbor. I have not been able to confirm this. I have not seen this anywhere. I don't know why it's they're saying that. Because Jack Showalter is part of the Greek Yeah, life. but he was kicked out of his fraternity. Uh I that's another statement made that I, I personally didn't find any articles or any evidence of that, but I, I'm gonna talk about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's it, what I found is er, the earliest mention, uh, at, on 11, 18 of 2022, someone local said anonymously that he was a neighbor of one, one, two, two. Okay. Which is, it, it's interesting, right? Because then why ditch him if you guys are going to the same place? Right. You know? Huh. Um, here is a clarification for people. So Jack Showalter was not in Sigma Chi. A lot of people think Jack Showalter was part of the, like, 4chan theory Sigma Chi. He is not. He is in uh, Delta Tau Delta. Oh, that's the party Hudson Lindau was in. Yes. That's the party he was at before he died. And that Maddie and the, I mean, the victims went to that party too. Mm hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And Delta Tau Delta, United States based international Greek college fraternity. It was founded in at Bethany College in Bethany, Virginia in 1858, which is a pretty old one. That's a pretty old one. So um, the fraternity currently has around 130 collegiate chapters and colonies nationwide with an estimate of 10,000 undergraduate members. Interesting. I haven't heard much about Delta Tau Delta. Other than Hudson Lindau, I haven't either. Yeah, Sigma Chi has been the uh, been the big focus. Um, so Jack Showalter was kicked out of his fraternity for bad behavior. So what have you heard? That's literally it. Just that he was kicked out for bad behavior. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, I've heard all kinds of things. I've heard that, uh, you know, it, we just talked about Brent Kopaka a little bit of, you know, laying the story out there. Um, Jack Showalter is the other one who seems to get connected to the animal mutilations in the area. Yes. Uh, they believe that they, as in the community, who, who sees uh, worth in this story, these details, and thinks there's a connection to the Idaho 4 believe that uh, Jack Showalter was kicked out of his fraternity for mutilating animals. Yep. So that's what I've heard about it. Um, I can't confirm anything. There are no police reports. Um, But it's interesting. It's interesting because a lot of people that I've known that are hunters – um, actually have a lot of respect for animals. You know, I, I don't know why there's this idea that like, if you're a hunter, then, 
uh, you automatically are the type of person who wants to abuse and mutilate animals. And those are two very different things, in my opinion. I've, I've personally known a lot of hunters that uh, appreciate and don't take for granted hunting the animal. You know, they use all of it. Um, it's not to intentionally cause harm. They, they end the animal's life in a very humane way. The reason why I'm saying that is because I don't think that you can draw a connection between a hunter and a crime is what I'm saying. I get what you're saying, but there are hunters out there that are not what you're saying. Sure. And I have, Just like there's humans out there yeah, that do that. And too. I, ha I have known them, um, you know, people who aren't respectful of animals. But again, like it's kind of a flip of a coin. Like, I don't know if I'd say it's a flip of a coin. I would say it's as as common as a human that is willing to abuse people you know there are good humans and there are bad humans yeah that's why so, i said it's a flip of a coin yeah that percentage is just high i don't think it's a 50 50 whether you get a bad human or a good human i do i don't i definitely don't <laughs> i'm kidding um so Jack Showalter was an acquaintance of the girls at the house. Obviously, I feel like that is blatantly obvious. The conversation they have is very clearly they're on first name basis. Yeah, duh. They knew each other. <laughs> yeah, but not, not all of them followed each other on social media, though. Okay. So how well did they know each other? Was it weird to the victims that he was walking with them? Could the conversation that we saw in the video not be as big of a deal as a lot of people put into it? And were they more like, why is this guy walking with us? I mean, it could still be a big deal and them still be like, why is this guy walking with us? Like, they could know. just be talking to each other. Yeah. It depends on what you define you, as a big when deal. When you have serious conversations and personal conversations with people, you're not having those conversations with someone that you wouldn't be comfortable walking with. I mean, they're drunk. I guess. And they're walking... Like I just Maddie see that was as literally being much less likely Ma than the obvious that they have a personal relationship or it was to the point of like being kind of sloppy drunk. Yeah. So, I mean, I could see it being brought up, but not going into depth about it. You know, like I told Adam everything. Like, that doesn't tell him what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But, you you know, in so on some of the social media, though, he appeared in, like, pictures and videos. So, I think they knew each other personally. Like, yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he, may, maybe, I don't know, maybe he didn't use social media much, or maybe he felt weird following them because they had boyfriends and like I don't know yeah personal choice for some reason I don't know so Jack Showalter that night the community believes he uh, immediately after that interaction he drove to his parents cabin in uh, Boise or Des Moines Um, I think it's Boise, right? Yeah, Boise, in Boise. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I think that could be strange if it's an unplanned trip, right? Because why would you unplan it at... 2 a.m., go drive a five-hour drive. Why would he be at a bar and plan to leave right after the bar at 1.30 or 1.45 a.m. to go drive to his parents? 
None of it makes sense. Yeah, I guess. Unless it's planned. What, you plan to go to a bar and then drive to your parents right after I mean, at could. 2 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, you got to remember college time. So college kids go to sleep at like 5 a.m. That's pretty common. That's normally when Greek row shuts down. So like staying up till 4 or 5 a.m. I don't think is that strange. Um, I think what what would make this strange is if it, it's unplanned, if that trip is unplanned or not. Which the only person that would be able to know that is the person that would be confirming his alibi. Right. So, um, I don't know. I haven't been able to confirm that. I would love to know if you guys can confirm that. Um, there's also been rumors that he's been kicked out of Corner Club and he wasn't allowed at Corner Club for being weird. Um, and all of this stems around that night, the night of the crime. Um, now. I okay. haven't heard what they think happened between him and them or why. Um, if you're a local there, though, like he was, you would know about the cameras. Those are not hidden cameras. You the know the grub truck cameras, the grub truck, and any of the other cameras there. Uh, like when they were walking from Corner Club, you would know about these cameras, right? So, would you, if you're going to commit a crime like this, or would this prevent you from committing the crime, go walk openly with the two people that you're going to commit the crime against? I don't think that's very likely. No, it doesn't seem very likely. It doesn't. It doesn't feel very sneaky. It doesn't feel very weird. The only in interaction that feels really weird to me is the ditching him thing. I don't understand that. Because based either. on everything that we've just covered right now, uh, clearly they have a personal relationship with him. Clearly... They knew him. He was in social media videos and pictures with uh, at the house at one one two two. They were they he he has a really close connection with Maddie's boyfriend. Um, so why they ditched him, I don't know, and I don't understand that. Uh, it, it clearly he wasn't expecting them to leave based on him throwing up his hands when they left. Yeah. Um. So that is the one thing that I find really interesting. If some of these details we can get confirmed, that would uh, be that would help me out a lot. That would help me out a lot in trying to identify a lot of this. You know, we've been talking about for a while now, and and we're still trying to get it locked down. I want to know when the animal mutilation started, and I want to know yep. when the animal mutilations ended. Yes. Okay. Now, a lot of people that have question marks around Jack Showalter uh, see a rich kid from a rich family. Now, everyone knows a lot of rich kid stories where they didn't grow up with any accountability. And I'm not trying to put all rich people in the box. In a box, I'm not trying to go all eat the rich or anything like that. But there's very real examples out there, like the uh, what we're going to be talking about a little bit later, the Shanna Gardner story. Um, where you don't, you grow up with no accountability. You grow up with financial freedom. You don't ever have to worry about anything except making sure you get what you want in life. And those people tend to have a very different view than a lot of people. Not always, but sometimes, right? Um, so I think a lot of people look at Jack Showalter and think this is a rich kid from a rich family that knows how to use a knife, that knows how to use a gun. He must always get what he wants. So something must have went wrong that night that caused him to potentially do these murders and then take off to Boise, right? Now, you know what is interesting? Hmm. So his parents are really important doctors, both of them. Make make oh. a ton of money. There are streets named after him. Okay. Wow. One of his family members, uh, I believe, also had a white 
four door sedan car that could match in this situation. That doesn't mean it was there. It wasn't his. Okay. Um, but after the crimes, they took off to Africa. South Africa. Is that confirmed? It's confirmed with pictures. The only thing that would change it is if the pictures are dated incorrectly. Okay. So, um, hmm. interesting, right? Yeah, that but is interesting. When we're looking at this crime, I I go back to the fact that if you were going to commit this crime, you wouldn't willingly put yourself in front of a camera with the victims. Yeah, the, I mean, that seems pretty obvious not to do that. Um, For somebody that had this crime scene so controlled, that feels really obvious to me. But it is also weird if if he did drive to his parents' cabin that night at like two o'clock in the morning and then they all took off to Africa. That's kind of weird if it wasn't pre-planned, like you said. Um, I have yeah, another theory. What? I told Adam everything. Was that, could that information of been really what got them harmed. Did he hear about this at 8 a.m. in the morning and get scared and take off? Did he feel like he was in trouble? Yeah, I that's that's kind of what I was thinking about before you said that is is that conversation they had on the street. Did that. Like, did that somehow... Did that scare him? Yeah. And he was like, I gotta go. But why would that have scared him? I. What do you mean? We don't know what it is. Exactly. And if there is information that had a connection to this crime, whoever did this... I mean, look at Ethan... A man doesn't make you invincible. Right. You know? I don't know. I I find it very interesting, you guys. Uh, I want to know what you think about it. I'm going to continue looking into this. This is like the, the Brent Kopaka. We've never talked about this topic before, okay? Uh, I wanted to lightly dive into it, but I want to give a reminder to everyone. These people that we're talking about in relation to the Idaho 4 case, it is uh, public knowledge. Some of the details are pulled from online with fair use. Um, but if you want us to be able to continue talking about them, you guys have to make sure that you're being respectful and responsible and not bothering these people, not reaching out to them, not interrupting anybody's lives while we dig into this, right? In a situation where maybe we figured out a something drew a connection, uh, that information will go to law enforcement and law enforcement would do their job. We just need to make sure that we aren't reaching out to these people and bothering them. Nothing we say and talk about makes somebody guilty. What makes somebody guilty of a crime is them doing that crime and then it being proven, you know? And court. Uh, yeah, it just makes me nervous always talking about people in this way. Yeah. Uh, because I have a respect for everybody. But... This is public information, and we have a brain, and it is part of the thought riot axiom. So let me know what you guys think. I confirm this message. 